Okay, welcome to uh, getting started in Hebrew class. We are on lesson four today. Today we will be learning the Samet, the Ayin, the Pei, the Pei Sofit, the Zadi, and the Zadi Sofit. So the Pei Sofit and the Zadi Sofit are final letters. All right, so today let's turn to page... 65 and we will learn our first letter so the letter that we are gonna begin learning today is the Samek so the Samek almost looks like a O similar it gets in cursive it looks like a O Alright, so the Samek makes a S sound, like Sa or Samek. For instance, in the word Sierra. Related words to Samek is Samach, which means to trust, to lean on, or to support, or hold up. And then we have Senechut, which is ordination, which specifically is the act of laying on hands. Now the difference between semechut and a, let's say, a uh, ordination certificate, which is called a shmicha, a shmicha is an ordination um, license or certificate as well as your authority to teach. When I became a rabbi, I received my shmicha, and I've also received semechut when I was ordained. All right, so look-alike letters is the mem sofit, which is the final letter of mem, as well as in some scripts, the mem sofit and the samech are incredibly similar. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very cautious with reading these two letters. Pay close attention to the rectangular shape of the lower right corner. So for instance, we're going to look at the Samech and the Mem Sofit. You'll notice that on the right corner, you'll see one is rectangular and the other is round. Mm -hmm. They almost look the same. And they almost look the same, That's exactly. Right. And you'll notice at the very bottom of the letter, you, you'll see the difference between the Samech as well as the mental feet. So one is rectangular and straight, the other one has a little diagonal. Alright, so, I laid me down and slept. I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. This is the healing, chapter 3, verse 6. And in your English uh, Protestant Bibles, you will, it would be in verse 5. Now, when you go home today, I would like you all to practice both the block print for the Samech as well as the cursive script. So, on the very first line, on the right-hand side of the page, you'll write the Samech, the block print, and then the next line down, when you go home, you'll write the cursive script, okay? So, do this at home. Alright, so, we're going to move on to page... 66 of your books words that begin a sonnet remember these are all words that we all need to commit to memory just like you do as committing bible verses these are words that you will learn in these classes as well as titles of Mashiach I want you all to begin to commit all of these words even within the previous lessons to memory However you do it, that's on you, whether you use flashcards or let's say uh, you 
practice from reading the textbooks. So the first word that begins with the words, the letter Sameh is Sukha, which is shelter. Now, it, I'm not sure if you remember, but there's a deep space called Sukhot, and that is when we build temporary shelters and we sleep under the stars, okay? Because remember, when we came out of Egypt, we had to make quick shelters while we were in the wilderness. Now the next word is sabiv, and that means to go around or around, okay? And then you have safar, which means book. So from now on, when I say, let's turn to a, bi a specific book and Hebrew, I would say, for instance, like uh, the book of Tehillim, I say, the Shekhalacha Sefer Tehillim, which means let's turn to the book of Psalms in Hebrew. Alright, so story in Hebrew is Sefer. Sefer, you have to sort of roll your R at the end. It's Sefer. As well as uh, Seder, which means order, which is the next word. And then you have Sedur, which is prayer book. Okay, so let's make sure remember, re we actually recognize and remember the difference between a Sedur and a Sefer. Alright, now titles of Mashiach that begin with the word, I mean the letter Sanach. We have Sod Elohim. So when we, when we understand this word, it means secrets of God, or in English, Paul talks about mysteries. Okay, so what are what is Sod Elohim? What is Sod Elohim, the mysteries of God? Well, we are all granted the ability to understand all of the mysteries and all of the knowledge of Hashem. So we have no need to worry about secrets of God because all things are known through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Alright, so the next word that we are going to learn today as well as the next letter is the letter Ayin. This letter is a very beautiful letter, I actually love it in the Hebrew. Ayin. The letter Ayin which in English is spelled Ayin. It's pronounced how it is spelled. Ayin does not make a sound itself, but indicates a pause created by a stop in the back of the throat. Similarly to the hyphen in the word U or O. When it begins a word, it simply carries the sound of the vowel associated with it. Words that seem to begin with a vowel actually begin with a silent letter such as ayin. Now remember, this is similar to the letter aleph as well as the yod, okay? So, pay attention. Related words. Ayin, which means eye or appearance or spring of water. Look like letters. Now, a lot of people mistake the letter zadi for a ayin because it looks very similar as well as the Zadi Sofit sometimes gets confused as well. Alright, so an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand, a foot for a foot. This is Shemot, Exodus 21 verse 24. Now the reason why I am sharing this specific verse for you, I want to make it clear that for instance, when someone loses their eye, like if you cause someone to lose their eye, you are supposed to be their eyes for them. Meaning, if they need help reading something, you are to be there to help them read. That is a commandment in the Torah. A, a tooth for a tooth, if you cause someone to, let's say, lose a tooth, what are you supposed to do? Well, the Torah makes it very simple. You are supposed to be the tooth for them. So what does that mean? It means that you are supposed to pretty much chop their food really small, make it, um, make it easy for them to chew on. A hand for a hand. If you cause someone to lose their hand, you are supposed to be their hand for them. Like for instance, if you cause someone to lose their hand, you want to be able to be there for them. So if they need help writing, or lifting something, or picking up something, or moving something, you are there for them. That is what this Torah commandment means. 
and a foot for a foot. And if you cause someone to lose their foot or have difficulty with mobility, you are to help them get around. That is also a commandment in the Torah that you are to perform and do. Alright, so again, when you go home, practice the block print as well as the cursive script for the letter Ayin. Now we have a little bit of a list of words that we're going to learn today, which begin with Ayin. For instance, the word service is Avadah. And then humility. This is a very good word to learn in Hebrew because the meaning is so much richer. It's Avana in Hebrew. So humility is Avana. As well as the word Amel, which means to weary. Um, Amus, which means a burden or something that's burdening. Now, Oni means poverty, affliction. Egal, which means golden. It also means preferably a golden calf. Avon, which means iniquity. Remember the other week we learned the word what sin means. So this word, iniquity, is avon. We've learned this before as well. Or, which means yoke. For instance, like yoke of oxen, yoke. Adat, which means congregation. Now, if you do not recognize that the name of my um, congregation that I desire to establish is called Kehilat Adat Yeshua, which means family and congregation of Jesus in Hebrew. Now you have Aseret Hadibarot, and that means ten words, also known as the Ten Commandments. Remember this, because this will be in an exam. It will be in the final exam. Etz <coughs> Chaim, which means tree of life. Remember this word, because this is a word that is spoken in both Revelation as well as by the prophets. Now, what is the tree of life? It is the Torah. A lot of people may not know this, but it is actually the Torah. The tree of life. Now, titles of Messiah, we have, and that begin with the letter Ayin, we have Eved Hashem, which means servants of Hashem, servants of the Lord. We have Ed, which means witness. And then we have Emmanuel, which means God is with us, or God <coughs> is present. By the way, that's the other definition for that word. All right, so as we move on, we are going to learn the next letter, which is the pay. All right, so we are learning the letter pay in Hebrew. All right, pay may or may not to contain a gedegesh. A gedegesh is a dot that appears in certain letters, sometimes changing the sound. When there is no gedegesh, the letter is called a fe. Remember this. When there is no gedegesh, the letter is called a fe. So for instance, I'm going to make it very simple. This is the letter pe. And this is the letter FE with no digash. Alright. FE makes an F sound. When the digash appears, it is called a PE and makes a P sound. PE and FE are considered different forms of the same letter, just like, for instance, the letter bet and vet. They are both same forms, different forms of the same letter. Alright, so, when Hebrew text is written without vowel points, which are called nechud, by the way, the degesh is often also left out. In this case, context 
and vocabulary will help you know how to pronounce the letter. For more information on the Dagesh will be found in Lesson 8, which we will discuss in a future lesson. Four lessons from now, by the way. Be humbled, and, be humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of a shem. Why am I mentioning this wonderful verse? Well, if you remember, Yeshua was tempted by Hazatarim in the mm -hmm. wilderness for 40 days. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you remember what it says in the the Besarah Gilah, the Gospels of Messiah, that Yeshua, when he was asked by Hazatarim, turn these stones into bread if you are the Son of God. Okay, so what was Yeshua's reply? He said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the shell. This is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It is a very important verse because we are to remember that man lives by the word. What does that mean? Well, let's say this. Every atom, every molecule of your mortal being is held together by what? By the Word. It is through the Word that you live. Okay, so when we remember in the very beginning in Bereshit in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, we find out what that Word is. When it says Bereshit bara Elohim et in the beginning God created the Word okay and in Yochanan John chapter 1 beginning of verse 1 it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God he was in the beginning with God and all things were made and without him nothing was made that was made. In him is the light, and the light is the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but darkness cannot comprehend it. Now, when, whenever you turn on, let's say, a lamp or a candle, okay, and the room is dark and you turn it on, what is mostly attracted to light? Is it not the darkness? It is. It is the darkness. The darkness surrounds and encompasses around the light because it is attracted to it. Just like, for instance, when we wear black colored t-shirts, when the sun hits it, oh my god, we burn. <laughs> we get hot. Okay, so as we continue i want you when you go home tonight to practice both the block print as well as the cursive script which is very easy to do by the way and let's turn to page 70. we are going to learn words that begin with a okay so the first word is patah which means to open next word is pashat which means simple, very simple. Next word is feot, which means corners, um, for instance, hair or of a field. So for instance, when you think of the word um, peot, you're looking at the, the, the peos, which grow at the corners or, or the temples of our heads, as well as you're looking at the corners of a field. So you have a field, you have the corners of that field, and that is called peot. Now you have pardes, which means orchard. Okay, if you remember what orchards are, they're beautiful, by the way. The orchards are very beautiful plants. We have the next word, peri, which means fruit. So this is a kosher word, peri, which means fruit. Um, when, when you separate, for instance, the meat from the milk, from the fruits like meat, dairy, and fruit, 
you understand the word peri means fruit. Next word is panim, which means face. So whenever we think of the face of Hashem, we say ha panim Hashem, the face of God. Now perim, perim, which means lots. Now also, it's also a feast day. It is not a feast of the Lord, but it is a feast to remember what Hashem did for us. Okay, we typically, we read the Megillot, which is the scroll of Esther. So on Purim, we actually uh, read the story of Esther. Remember how Hashem saved us from the wicked Haman. Now we have Pele, which means miracles. Okay, miracles, wonders, and signs, by the way. Now, titles of Mashiach, which, which is, which begin with the letter of Hay, which is Pesach, Passover. Preferably, Passover sacrifice. Mashiach died for us on Pesach. He became our final sin sacrifice. Now, does that say that we need we forget to no longer keep the Passover? Chaz Shalom, God forbid. We are to keep the Passover every year on the 14th of Nisan. The next word is Podeh, which means ransomer. And then the final word is Gideon, which means ransom. Now we are going to learn the very next word, which is the pay sofit, which is the final pay, by the way. Now, if remember last lesson in lesson three, we learned a lot of final letters. So this letter is actually a final letter. Okay, so we're learning the peso feet. Okay, the peso feet, in script form, peso feet can easily be confused with other letters. So, in script form, such as cursive form, you have peso feet, then you have zadi feet, and then you have the lamin. Pay attention to these cursive letters because in this specific script form, you will find that they look very similar. So when you go home, I would like you to practice the pay so feet by writing it in both block print as well as the cursive script. Mm -hmm. Now the next word we are going to learn, if we can turn to page 72, we are going to learn The Zadi, one of my favorite letters, by the way. So the Zadi, the Zadi is a very interesting letter because it's some is some call, sometimes called Zadi. Okay, so be very cautious when you are reading this letter because it can also be called Zadik, which means righteous. All right, Zadi is sometimes called Zadik, which means righteous one. The original and most common name is Zadi. Zadi has in hats at the end of the word hats in English makes a TS sound or a TZ sound. Related words to Zadi is Zada, which means to hunt, to lie in ambush. And then you have Zad, which means side. And then in Aramaic you have Zadia, which means chaos. And then in Hebrew you have Zadik, which means righteous one or righteous man. 
Okay, so when we are careful to obey all of the mitzvot Hashem, the commandments of God as He has commanded us, we are zaddik. We are righteous, okay, in the eyes of God. Look-alike letters, such as Ayin and Aleph, look very similar to the word Zadi. The righteous man will flourish like a palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. This is coming from Tehillim 92, verse 13. In your English Bibles, it will be verse 12. When you go home tonight, I want you to practice the block print as well as the cursive script for the letter Zadi. Let's turn to page 73, and we will begin by learning words that begin with the letter Zadi. So we have Zedek, which means righteousness in Hebrew. We are going to memorize these words, okay? Then we have Zedaka, which means righteous acts or charity zit zit which is ritual fringes which for instance if we remember that we are to wear zit zit at the four corners of our garments so i just made a perfect example my undergarment is right here and it's literally at the corner of it okay Now we have zakach, which means to laugh, okay, to enjoy oneself and laugh. Then we have zinzun, which means reduction or self-contraction. Then we have zion, which means Zion, all of Israel, not just the land, okay, but the people as well as the nation of Israel is called Zion, as well as Mount Moriah is called Zion in Jerusalem. Now, titles of Mashiach, we have Zadich, which means righteous one. We have Zelem Elohim, which means image of God. Now, I'm going to go back to Bereshit, Genesis. Remember, all of mankind is made in the image and likeness of God, both male and female, for Hashem created us that way. So the image of God is a man and his wife. I'm making it very blunt there, by the way. A man and his wife is created in the image of God. So, in the Hebrew, that is Zalem Elohim. Then we have Zamach, which means branch. Now, don't get this confused with the word Netzer, which also means branch. Alright, so, now we're going to move on to the next letter, which is the Zadi Sofit. So we are going to learn the Zadi Sophie. Alright, so the Zadi Sophie in cursive script, okay, let's not get these confused. So in script form, Zadi Sufi can easily confuse with other letters such as A Sufi and Lame. So pay very close attention when you write these words and these letters in Hebrew. Okay, so today when you go home, I want you to practice writing the block print as well as the cursive script. Now, for lesson four, we are going to learn our vocabulary words, okay? So, this is going to be fun. The first word is yen, which means there is not. The next word is a call, which means eat. 
to eat. Okay, for instance, like you're going to eat food. Next word is Hanan, which is behold. The following word is Amad, which means to stand. Next word is Kol, which means all. So for instance, when we say all of Israel, we say Kol Israel. Next word is Ben, <coughs> which means son. I'm also going to add a word to that. It is Bar, which is the same, which is the, the Bet and the Resh. And that also means sun. Now we are going to learn a new word. This is gam, which means also. Okay, so pay attention to this word because you'll find it a lot in the Hebrew language. Alright, so these things I want you to take <coughs> home with you and then and practice on your own. We've done this in the past. We we actually looked at the four letters in each line we are going to for each row circle the letter named on the right each time it appears so for instance the ayin you want to circle all of the ayin for the pay you want to circle all of the pay for the zadi you want to circle the zadi for the samet you want to circle the samet for the Zadi Sofit, you want the circle of the Zadi Sofit, and the Pei Sofit, you want the circle. Then we are going to practice writing the Hebrew <coughs> letters. Write the first 18 letters of the Hebrew alphabet in order from right to left. This also includes the final letter forms, if it exists. So, for instance, all of the letters that we practiced within Lesson 1 through Lesson 4, you are going to write down those letters. So, from Aleph all the way to the very last letter of Zadi Sofit. Okay? And you're going to write it on, on the lines that you see from right to left. Now, when you go home, I want you to, for instance, practice your reading. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line connecting each Hebrew word with its transliteration equivalent, okay? And then we're going to do some transliteration writing. And we are going to transliterate each of the Hebrew words filling in the blanks with the appropriate English consonants. The first one is done for you as an example, okay? And then we get to the fun part, which is the quiz, which I will ask you guys to do and then bring in next week, okay? Which will consist of vocabulary, for each word, write its transliteration and meaning. For instance, the Hebrew word, call, okay, or call, you're going to write the transliteration as well as the name. So, for instance, um, the word call is all, you want to write call, K-O-L, and then the meaning, which is A-L-L, -L, okay? Now, letters. First write the first 18 letters of the Hebrew alphabet in order from right to left. Write the name in English underneath. So for instance, you have this big block here. You're going to write the letter Aleph. And then right beneath it, you're going to write A-L-E-F for Aleph. And you'll do it Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gamel, Bal, A, going on and on. Okay? And then I'm going to have you practice reading. Okay? So here's the fun part about this little uh, quiz and exercise, by the way. It's also an exercise. Draw a line to connect each word with its transliteration. So, for instance, you want to connect these words together just by, for instance, drawing the lines. 
And that concludes the lesson for today. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, earlier, on uh, the page back in here, you said the right uh, additional word. Mm hmm. It was bar. Yes. Uh, huh? It means sun. Yes. The, the Hebrew word that I, it's, it's actually on page 75. So if you can, because this is going to be an additional word which is not in the text, but I want you to write it in your text. Okay, so we have bar in Hebrew. Would, would that be like Barabbas? Yes, also for instance, Bar Yosef, ben David, right which means here. son of Joseph, son of David. Okay, so for instance, hmm. Mashiach's full name is Yeshua Bar Yosef ben David. That is his full Hebrew name. Unfortunately, a lot of people think that the word Christ and Jesus is his full name. Unfortunately, Christ is just a title. It means Messiah, which Messiah in Hebrew means anointed one. Okay? So, to be very simple minded on this, it would be best to remember that just like in Hebrew, we have multiple meanings. Okay, so for instance, you have bar and ben. Both mean son or son of. Okay, so yes, I, I have a question about which is the letters in yes. this part because I did the quiz, the, the three that you gave us Lesson last time. Three, yes. But it says here, write the name in English letters underneath. It doesn't say to put the, the names in Hebrew. Uh, that, that I just, you said to write Aleph. I just put the letters in English, because that's what it says. But I wrote the, the letter on the top in the Hebrew letter. Like A, B, C. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I put um, the Aleph, but on the bottom I put A, because you're saying you're supposed to also write Aleph. You're not going to have any room. You will have room, for instance. See, cause, like, cause this is how I did it. Because it's saying here, write the name in English letters underneath. For instance, let me show you. So then, can I put it on top, Aleph here? I, I did that. And then, and then, and then the English. Yep. That's how I want you to do it. Oh, you don't want me to put like the letter? That, that's Not the letter. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Then I'll fix it. Yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> you might just need to write a little okay, bit smaller than you did. That's not what you're saying here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So, okay. um, as we continue, any other questions? Natalie, I know you haven't been here for a few weeks, but do you have any questions? No, I you also this. like I came in teeth and nobody's here and nobody told me there wasn't going to be something. So right. I want to get on some mailing list so I get told them there's not going to be something. I will email you. The reason why I wasn't here on the 18th is I was because I had bronchitis, yes. But then I just wasn't told and so I just need to get on some mailing list. Mailing list, absolutely. I, I have on my website a place where you could do a subscription which you could subscribe and I could put you on my mailing list or you, I believe you have my phone number so every week for instance you can call that number like let's say on a Monday to make sure that classes that next day you can do that or you can contact me on my cell phone which I'll share with you at the end of the class okay um, I think you might already have it there but just in case <laughs> no, my husband does, I think. Yeah. So I, I do apologize for on the 18th. I was really sick. I was actually in the ER the night before with bronchitis. They had me with acute bronchitis, so it was really severe. And then um, the following week after that, you know, it was a little bit, uh, um, a little bit so slow. We, <laughs> so we missed the 18th. My husband was in Kansas. On the Kansas right. On so the 18th, we didn't have a good. class that day. So what we did is we did lesson two the following week. 
And so then you did less than two, was the 25th? Yes, on the 25th I did less than two. So I do have an extra copy of less than two. And I, I got, well, we have to, when did you do less than three? This is less than four. Um, we did less than three last week. But that was the 25th. Yes. Yeah. And the week before that I was sick, and the week before that I did less than two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just missed one week. Yes, I missed one week. Everybody missed one week, including me. <laughs> yeah, all of us. Yeah, all of us. <laughs> um, any other questions? All right, that concludes today's lesson. Um, Shavuot Tov. Have a good week ahead. Okay, guys. Bless all right. you all. And thank you for coming. It's good to see you guys.